All right, with this uh, forecast video update on this Friday, July 24th, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you guys had a wonderful Friday. And I have to say that our rain chances today was not quite as high like it was over the past uh, several days, especially this week. So thankfully, I guess uh, we, I guess, I guess we got to see the, uh, ch the chances of rain staying low uh, pretty much on this uh, Friday. But other than that, it's been, it's been really hot here across central Florida as well with temperatures we saw Mostly in the 90s with heat index temperatures in the triple digits, which we'll look and see who saw the hottest uh, t uh, today in just a little bit. But we got some rain chances moving our way, at least back into central Florida as we head towards the weekend. Uh, mostly average chances we're talking about. And, of course, temperature is going to still remain hot. Uh, so we'll, have, we'll look at that here in just a little bit, along with the uh, tropics, because tropics are getting a little busy already in the Atlantic and the Gulf uh, to kick off the weekend as well. So before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the radar and see what's happening across central Florida uh, right now on this Friday evening. And uh, as you can see, we are looking quiet for almost all of us here in central Florida, except there are just a couple of isolated showers, for example, for pan uh, to the south just a little bit and zoom in into uh, Polk County. Because as you can see on the radar, there, also a couple, there are a couple of isolated uh, spottier showers happening uh, right now, just right along Highway 17, way south of Pardo. So if I put this in motion... It looks like they're pretty much moving. Uh, they're moving due from southeast to north and west right now at about uh, 45 to perhaps 55 miles per hour. So they're quick mover, quick movers. So just keep that in mind. So if you live again, Rodolon, uh 17 south of Bardo, again, just again, if you got any plans for this evening, again, do not panic because it's not going to last much longer. So just want you to be clear uh, if you can. And also we got a we got a little bit of a sprinkle popping up right here as well. Just uh, Rodolon I4. Uh, north of Winter Haven in Polk County, but again, it's nothing too major to worry about uh, this evening too. And as we zoom out here just a little bit, I'll show you. In, I'll show you. In, uh, sh I'm going to show you uh, who, who else has seen a few showers right now, perhaps sprinkles on this Friday evening. And it looks like we've got a couple of uh, pop up sprinkles that are beginning to pop up right now here. Basically, one here uh, just to the east of Sanford. One right, one right up here uh, in northwestern Orange County near Lake Apopka. And there's also a couple of sprinkles up here just to the west of Daytona Beach. But we, maybe, we, we, we may have to watch maybe just for a few tropical downpours may, that are trying to develop here off the coast of Florida. Because that could maybe uh, bring maybe a couple of uh, tropical showers uh, from Volusia and Flacco counties this evening. So that's something we'll watch uh, carefully. But for, for the most part, it's their spotty, so that's going to stay off at least off the coast. Uh, at least for at least for now, but we'll watch them carefully in case if uh, if we see anything happening as it moves inland. So just want to keep you guys that in mind. But like I said before, other than that, most of Central Florida is looking quiet for the rest of this evening. So if we got any plans for tonight to kick off the uh, weekend? I think it'll be I think you'll be in pretty good shape. So uh, if you got uh, uh, plans to go to uh, maybe maybe out to dinner, perhaps maybe a movie or just whatever you got going on this evening. You are 100% free to go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the temperatures today in central Florida, because, again, there's been another hot one uh, here in the uh, Sunshine State. And since, then we, and since then we saw lots of sunshine this afternoon, that's why it, that's why it brought our temperatures really, really higher uh, today. So, for example, going back to about 4 o'clock this afternoon, uh, right here in Orlando, we did hit a high temperature, high temperature today at about 91 degrees, so it's been really a warm day today here in the metro area and around near the attractions. We saw a heat index temperature close to 100 in Orlando as well this afternoon. Once you go farther south in Kissimmee, same thing for you, like in Orlando, the current, or, or not, not current, uh, the high temperature, at, excuse me, early this afternoon got up to about 91 degrees as well. Once you go farther south into Lakeland and Polk County, it looks like you've, uh, it looks like you guys did hit 92 for the high also. Uh, for you all in the villages and even up towards Ocala, high temperatures today for you guys only approach the lower 90s also. And that goes for the same uh, story for you folks in Sanford. Uh, also, if you live in Titusville, Daytona Beach, and perhaps the Palm Coast area, it looks like you guys mostly stayed in the upper 80s, but it was still hotter uh, than Hades, like, like what my mom uh, calls it. Uh, so it was, still, it was still more like summer, at least over in those areas this afternoon. So, yes, so it's mostly our inland areas that saw, that saw temperatures today only in the lower 90s. So, again, what my mom, what, what my mother uh, usually call is it's been really hotter than Hades uh, today. And it's going to continue to stay the way here for the next uh, several days, including this weekend. So 
we got big plans. Remember to stay cool. Remember to stay hydrated and take breaks at times if you can. All right, so let's get let's go let's let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, current temperatures right now. Basically, at this uh, eight o'clock hour in Central Florida, as you can see, we're basically sitting in the upper eighties at the moment. At the moment, so right now, for example, in Orlando and, the, and also for Kissimmee, Sanford, and the Villages, you both are sitting at about eighty-seven degrees at the moment. We got eighty-four uh, right now for the current temperature in Ocala. 83 is the current temperature in Lakeland. Also, we got 85 in Titusville, and that goes for the same story for you guys in Daytona Beach. And we got 86 also up and around uh, Palm Coast. So, yep, looking still warm out there, but at least the sun is about to set, so it's not looking hotter. So that's usually during the day. But once you step outside this evening, if you got big plans, remember, remember you're going to feel that humidity. So yeah, it is still quite warm out there as we're ending our week. All right, since we got some rain chances moving, moving back into Central Florida this weekend, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Futurecast, show you the timing and see who's going to see some rain for tomorrow and Sunday. And remember, it's not going to rain all day, so we're not talking about like a big washout this weekend, so don't cancel or postpone your plans. So if you got if you got any outings going on for the weekend, you should be, again, you should be okay to do them, but just be aware that some storms could develop, so it's so just keep that in mind. But it's not just an all-day washout we're talking about. It's just like an on-and-off type event. So just saying. And, uh, of course, uh, if you're just uh, popping into uh, Facebook Live as well this evening, again, I wouldn't mind if you could uh, go ahead and share this feed to your other Facebook uh, followers. Because remember, Mamado is uh, sharing is caring. Because we have anybody anybody that lives here in Central Florida, and we'll love to know, and we'll love to know about the weather for the next uh, couple of weeks as we get through the rest of July into early August. I think it'll be really uh, good if you share this feed as well. And before we get started, I'll go ahead and uh, share uh, this feed to one of my other pages. So after I do that, we'll get started. All right, so here we go. So it started with so start, starting at about uh, 9 o'clock tonight. Again, it looks like we could see maybe a few showers left over for areas uh, in Polk County. So basically stretching from Lakeland back down into uh, the Lake Wales area. It looks like you could see maybe a little bit of rain left over as we head towards 9 p.m. But otherwise, most of, the rest, most, of the, uh, most of the rest of the viewing area in central Florida looks to be staying dry uh, as we get to the rest of tonight at least mid-evening, as a matter of fact, and now it goes for the same thing as we hit, as we approach the overnight hours and even into the start of the morning tomorrow. So if you're waking up early tomorrow morning to uh, maybe do something, it looks like we'll be looking pretty good with the uh, morning glow temperatures in the uh, 70s. So it'll be still warm out there, but at least we'll see a good sunrise uh, then as we head towards the morning hours. And then as we head towards uh, tomorrow afternoon, Again, it looks like we'll see maybe just a few pop-up showers and storms, but not looking at an all-day rain event, so it could be spotty at some, in some places, so it's not going to rain everywhere. So some of you may see a little bit of rain, some of you may not. So it's pretty much, much going to be the same pattern like we've seen today, but for tomorrow. And again, uh, otherwise, this will be partly sunny with more temperatures uh, remaining hot with 90s and heat index temperatures in the triple digits. So if we got some, uh, again, if you got any plans for, Tomorrow, it's like if you're going to be outside all day tomorrow, whether you're spending a day over at Universal, SeaWorld, perhaps maybe Walt Disney World, for example, maybe going to the beach. Remember to stay cool, stay hydrated, and take frequent breaks at all times, especially during this time of year. So so, so please be aware. And, maybe, and be, sure, be sure for plenty of sunscreen on you, too, because, you know, you, since if you're going to be out, out in the sun all day tomorrow, it'll be a good idea if you put some sunscreen on you, too. All right, so heading into the evening hours, close to sunset, it looks like we could see maybe a few showers that may try to develop here south of Orlando. So basically, one there could be one right here uh, near Disney, back down to two, Celebration, to, to uh, Kissimmee. And that goes for the same thing for areas in southern Polk County. So from Winter Haven to Lakeland, you may see just a few showers, perhaps maybe a storm or two, but nothing too significant to worry about. So that's something you may want to keep in mind if you've got any plans for the evening, but it should not last much longer. And then I'll taper off as we head towards mid to late evening and even into the overnight hours, keeping our weather dry with lows in the 70s. And we'll start off early Sunday 
uh, into a dry note, but notice here on Futurecast that there may be a few pop-up showers that could try to develop here along on 95. So basically from Titusville to Daytona, could be maybe could be maybe a brief coastal shower or two, but still looking mostly dry for most of us here to start off our Sunday. So if you got any plans then, you should be fine. And of course, it'll still be warm. It'll, it'll be still warm, still muggy with morning glow temperatures in the uh, 70s. And then heading into the afternoon, we'll see another day of some showers and storms. But it looks like we might have to bump up the coverage a little bit, about 50%, uh, if that is correct. So this is uh, this is late afternoon at 5 p.m. It looks like we could see maybe a good shot of some showers and storms, maybe south and west of Orlando. So, for example, from Clearmont, stretching back down into uh, Lakeland to Winter Haven and Lake Wells. Could be some scattered showers and storms possible, but again, not going to rain all day. Some of you may see rain, some of you may not. That's why it's a hit or miss type of event we're seeing over the weekend. So just please note that. Otherwise, still continue to stay hot and muggy with more temperatures uh, again staying in the summer-like uh, pattern with mostly 90s and heat, heat index uh, temperatures in the uh, triple digits. So just please uh, keep that in mind. And as we hand it to the evening hours, about around 6 or 7, we'll see these storms continue to, uh, at least could be a couple of develop here, maybe west of I-4, but otherwise could, you'll be weakening into some scattered showers. So basically, once you live, if you live in places like uh, near Bellevue to south of downtown Ocala to Clearmont into Bushnell, you may see just a few uh, showers after sunset on Sunday, but otherwise looking dry for the rest of our viewing area then. And as we head, as, and as we head into the uh, Mid to late evening hours, we'll see these showers uh, taper off, except could be maybe some right here towards Daytona and Palm Coast, but leaving most of the rest of the rest of our viewing area looking dry uh, and still warm uh, with lows in the uh, 70s. So there you have it. So how much rain you you folks could see, at least with these storms this weekend? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the precipitation accumulation product on future cast on future cast and see what we're expecting. Like I said. Some of you may see rain, some of you may not. So it's, it's pretty much the same pattern like we've seen today than what we saw this week. So it looks like as we get into uh, the next couple of days, again, this model will carry through early Monday morning. It looks like uh, looks like some localized places, basically from Osceola back to, back over towards, um, let's say, Claremont into Lakeland. You can see maybe localized place or places, localized totals, excuse me, between maybe two to four inches of rain. So that's something we'll watch uh, closely. But other places that we'll see lesser, we'll see lesser chances of chances of rain this weekend looks to be about tenths or maybe a quarter of an inch. So so that's something we'll watch uh, carefully. But again, not a, not a washout. So just note that. All right, and before we take a look at the tropics, since it's getting a little busy in the Atlantic uh, as we're ending this week and kick off the weekend, let's take another check of the radar, because if you're just uh, popping on into Facebook Live right now, if you missed the radar just a little while ago, here it is again. And like I said, the only things we're, the only thing we're seeing, right, we're seeing here this evening is just a few isolated showers, especially south of uh, uh, Bardo in southern Polk County, right along 17, but otherwise the rest of our viewing area is looking quiet. So there you go. So let's go ahead and turn off the radar and let's go ahead, let's go ahead and light up the big picture and show you uh, where we're watching carefully as far as the tropics go. So let me turn on the uh, tropical satellite and turn on the uh, tropical tracks. And the first thing we'll be, well, the first thing we're watching right now is uh, Hannah. It just became into a tropical storm late last night. So, so yes, we're tracking tropical storm Hannah, and the winds are starting to increase even more. So as of this evening, we're seeing winds uh, continue to increase up to about 50 miles per hour as it moves due west at 10. So as you can see, it's about to move, uh, it's about to move into uh, Texas pretty soon as far as the eye wall of the storm goes. But look at the track, though. It looks like once it gets close to Corp uh, Corpus Christi sometime by tomorrow afternoon, it looks like this may be coming to a hurricane. Not a major hurricane, but just maybe a minimal hurricane. I'm talking about like maybe a Category 1 uh, or so, and that could increase the winds up to about uh, 75 miles per hour. So that, so that's something we'll watch uh, carefully. But already, <clears throat> in the Texas Gulf Coast region, especially south of Houston, back down into Victoria and Corpus Christi, uh, these, these little red um, polygon boxes indicate that, that, there's, that, that that's a, a tropical storm warning. Uh, that is in effect right now. So, yes, there are tropical storm warnings in effect here for the Texas Gulf Coast region, and there's also some flood watches in effect, uh, which includes mostly near the Houston area, but not really. It's these, these are in the green shaded colors you see on the map. So, so yeah, so, so, that, so, that is, so that is a little doozy watching uh, carefully, but at least 
the impacts from which before became Hannah is moving out of Florida. So that's why that's going to keep our rain chances a little bit minimal for the weekend. So, so just want to let you know about that. <clears throat> but after it does become into a hurricane, uh, you know, Saturday afternoon, which is tomorrow, it will be it will start to weaken into a tropical storm again as winds go down to about 45 miles per hour sometime by early Sunday morning, and then to a depression as it moves off Texas into the into the it moves into the Mexico. Uh, Area basically from Monterey to uh, Moncla- uh, Clova in Salt uh, Salt Hollow or Salt Saltillo. I'm not sure how you pronounce that name there, but these locations in Mexico will see the remnants of uh, Hannah uh, as we get into uh, late Sunday and perhaps an early Monday. So at least Texas will be out will be out of the danger zone by Sunday night. So so there you have it. And again, it's not just Hannah we're watching, but we're also watching uh, another tropical storm that is uh, off towards the Atlantic, and that is uh, uh, that is Gonzalo, as you can see on the map. So right now, tropical storm Gonzalo is actually off towards the Atlantic, uh, just near the Caribbean Sea, as you can see on the map here. And as you can see, the winds right now are continue to, well, it's decreasing some, so it's not really looking as strong like it was maybe a little before, but it still remains as a, as a tropical storm with winds uh, re- remaining at about uh, 40 miles per hour as it moves due west, still moving quickly, but still slower at about 20 miles per hour. So it looks like it'll still, make, it'll still be making landfall towards the eastern Caribbean Sea, this time staying south of St. Lucia as we head towards uh, perhaps uh, like between uh, tomorrow afternoon and early Sunday, so perhaps the Granada and the the uh, the uh, Toba the Tobaj area could, 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 could potentially get hit by tropical storm force winds with uh, Gonzalo as we head towards the second half of this weekend. But it looks like it will not become into a hurricane as we thought we would. So that's a good thing. So because right before, you know, like yesterday or perhaps the past couple of nights on the Facebook live feeds, you've seen that uh, the track was to show Gonzalo uh, to become into a category one storm. Well, thankfully, it's not gonna be, it's not going to become into a hurricane. So it will just stay as a tropical storm rating. Uh, as it moves due west, pushing towards the eastern Caribbean Sea this weekend, and also moving far, at least farther west, as we get towards early next week here, as it weakens into a tropical depression near uh, the Ar- the uh, the Aruba area. So, so the good news is that I don't. The good news is that I don't think that this storm will be will be impacting Central Florida at all. So that's some good news. But we'll still keep an eye on that for you uh, carefully. And as you can see up towards near the British Virgin Islands area, there are tropical storm watches uh, also in effect because it looks like they could still see the remnants of Gonzalo as we head towards this weekend and perhaps in early next week. And we're also watching another wave as well behind Gonzalo, and that is that is way off towards the Atlantic, or excuse me, uh, off the coast of Africa, I'm sorry. Again, I got, I got my words mixed up here, so bear with me. And I believe it's this one right here we're watching carefully. Yes, this is a this is another wave we'll be watching behind Gonzalo, and it looks like it may be coming to maybe a depression, perhaps a tropical storm as we head towards the next uh, several days. So that's something we'll keep an eye out uh, carefully. And this is moving to the same direction. This is moving due, uh, due mostly due west at about uh, let's say about ten to fifteen miles per hour. So so that's something we'll have to watch uh, closely too as we get into the next uh, uh, several days. So not just this weekend, but into uh, next week as we close out July. And as you can see, the wave is located south of Cabo Verde Islands. So, so yeah, that's why tropics are getting close to be, or close to be getting busy uh, uh, here for at least for this time of year. Because you know, like I said before, uh, mid to late August, all the way towards mid October, is when tropics get really busy uh, across the Atlantic, and that's what we call it the peak season. So we're getting close to that, but not quite. But it's getting a little active as we're ending July. So there you guys have it. So I'll go ahead and turn off the tropical tracks and uh, turn off the satellite since we're done with the uh, update on the tropics this evening. And we'll go back here to home in central Florida and we'll get this time one more check of the radar. Because again, if you're just coming on into Facebook Live this evening, if you missed the radar a little while ago at the beginning of this uh, video, we'll hear this again. And like I said before, uh, the only thing that we're seeing here on Radar is just a couple of isolated showers here that is that are developing just uh, south of Bardo along seven along Highway 17 in Polk County, but otherwise the rest of our viewing area is looking quiet, and we're expecting this weather pattern to stay quiet for the rest of tonight. So, you got plans? You're good to go. All right, so heading into uh, the GFS, we're going to begin with uh, Monday here, which is early next week. 
And it looks like our rain chances for, our, or actually, that's that's not Monday. I'm sorry, Me meant to, that's Sunday. Here's Monday. Again, apologize, you know, for some mix-ups, but just bear with me. So this is Monday of next week, July 27th. It looks like we'll see maybe the rain chances continue to stay mostly average at about 50%, we'll call. So we'll, we'll call for about a 50% coverage of some afternoon showers and storms here in central Florida. Uh, but again, not going to rain all day as the typical summer pattern uh, returns uh, as we get to the next uh, few days, including this weekend and into Monday as well. And besides that, we'll see temperatures continue to stay mostly high, uh, higher with mostly 90s and heated X temperatures in the triple digits. So we're expecting the heat to continue also, uh, for, at least for at least for most of Florida, but not just for the state, but also across portions of the Mississippi Valley region, which includes Jackson, Birmingham, Atlanta, and Charleston, South Carolina. So we're expecting this major heat wave to continue as we get into the beginning of next week. <clears throat> All right, taking you to next Tuesday, which is July 28th. It looks like we'll see the rain chances uh, bump up again. So we're going to so we're going to raise we're going to rise the uh, chances of rain up about about 60% as we head towards next Tuesday. So we'll call about a 60% coverage of some afternoon showers and storms in and across uh, central Florida. So we can, at least we can use a good we can use another good amount of rain uh, possibly as we head towards that day. Temperatures below uh, below that. We'll be looking at uh, still still looking more warmer, but not really as hot as we get into Monday. So we're talking about mostly temperatures cooling down briefly into the upper 80s and even lower 90s, since we're going to see a good chance for some showers and thunderstorms uh, for, for Tuesday. So that'll be good. All right, taking you to uh, Wednesday, which is uh, July 29th. It looks like we'll see the rain chances continue to stay, well, not really as high, but mostly continue back going back down to average type. So we're going to so we're going to decrease the rain chance back down about 50% for some of us as we head towards uh, Wednesday uh, of showers and storms. So it looks like we could see a good chance maybe from Orlando and south, maybe a little bit north of Orlando too, but it looks like the chances looks to be much lower at this point, but it's it's, it's just the same it's the same old pattern we've been seeing lately this summer as usual. And as we take a look at those high temperatures, again, mostly we'll see 80s when we see these uh, thunderstorms pop up. Before that, we'll be seeing mostly just upper 80s and lower 90s uh, for highs. So that's uh, so that's Wednesday. All right, uh, taking you to uh, next Thursday, one week from one week from yesterday. This is for Thursday, July 30th. It looks like we'll see the rain chances uh, taper down to about 30 percent. We'll call for some spots, but most of us may stay dry as, as a matter of fact. So at least we'll get a little break from the rain uh, as we approach late next week. If this model trend does, uh, you know, does stay that way, but we'll see. And as we uh, take a look at the uh, Highs for that day, we'll be looking at uh, temperatures to uh, heat things back into the mid-90s with heat index temperatures in the triple digits. So, yep, the old man summer heat continues as we head towards uh, not just uh, this weekend or early next week, but into the second half of the work week as well. <clears throat> All right, heading into uh, next Friday, July 31st. Will be the last day for the month, actually. It looks like we'll see the rain chances stay low at about 20 to 30 percent, especially from Orlando south. So maybe a brief thunderstorm could pop up, but otherwise we'll be mostly dry for most of us as we head towards that day. So that's going to keep the rain chances uh, at least higher up north of our state, including Jacksonville. So basically from Jacksonville to Atlanta, Birmingham and Charleston can see maybe a higher chance for some showers and thunderstorms uh, on at least a, one week from today. But not a whole lot here in central Florida, basically, so we can use another break from the rain, possibly, uh, as we head towards that day. But temperatures, though, will continue to stay more hot and more muggy, though, with more 90s and heated X temperatures in the triple digits. So, yep, so the heat does continue to stay that way here for next week uh, all across much of the Sunshine State. All right, heading into uh, next weekend. This is one week one week uh, from tomorrow, actually. This is for August 1st. It seems like we'll keep the rain chances low at about 20%, basically south of Orlando. So anywhere from uh, southern Polk to southern Osceola and Brevard County. So you may see about a 20% shot of a brief shower or two, but otherwise I think we'll be keep, we're going to keep our weather dry uh, if this model run is correct. 
So, so just keep that in mind. And as we take a look at those temperatures, again, the heat will continue to build in with more 90s and heat index temperatures than the triple digits as we head towards uh, next weekend. All right, heading into uh, Sunday, August 2nd. Again, rain chances stay low to about 20%, but some of us will stay dry as a matter of fact. So if we get any plans for uh, next Sunday and even next Saturday too, you'll be fine. But remember to try to stay cool at times since we're, since we're still expecting more of the same with another round of some hot temperatures. And it, it, will, continue to stay that, it will continue to stay that way also for the 2nd of August too with mostly 90s and heated X temperatures in the uh, triple digits. All right, heading into the uh, start of the first week of August. This is taking you to uh, Monday, August 3rd. It seems like we're, we're going to bump up the rain chance to about 50% uh, as we head towards that day. So about a 50% cover to some late afternoon showers and thunderstorms in central Florida as the uh, typical pattern returns as far as rain chances go uh, that day. Again, not going to rain all day if it's correct, but we'll keep the temperatures still remaining hotter with, mo with mostly 90s and heat index temperatures in the triple digits. But look at these temps up here up and around Jacksonville, all the way up towards uh, Charleston, South Carolina, even for the Mississippi Valley region, too. They're expecting these temperatures to get really, really much hotter and much humid with more 90s and heat index temperatures in the triple digits. So it could be really a hot start to the work week uh, for August if this, tr if this trend uh, is correct. So we'll see. All right, heading into the land of voodoo country. This is sticking you to Tuesday, August 4th. We'll see our rain chances get, we'll see our rain chances continue, at least for some of us in central Florida, but mostly looking about a, about a 40% coverage. So I'm not going to rain all day, like I said before. So just about a 40% uh, chance for maybe a few afternoon showers and a quick few thunderstorms if this model trend is correct. Otherwise, some spots may be looking dry, uh, for the most, for the most part on the day we get there. But temperatures, though, will, will remain pretty, pretty much above average with mostly, again, 90s and heat index temperatures in the triple digits. But notice these pink shaded colors up here from the Florida Panhandle into Mississippi and Alabama. We're talking about temperatures staying really, really hot and extremely muggy with more not just upper 90s, but perhaps the, the records in the triple digits. So that's why I said before, we're not quite done with summer quite yet uh, here in the United States, including here in Florida. Because that's, that's why we, got, still, we still got more ways to go until we get to fall. So just hang in there, and we'll get there. All right, uh, heading into Wednesday, August 5th. It seems like we'll keep the rain chances again pretty much low to about 20%. Most of us, uh, otherwise, we will be looking uh, mostly dry with uh, plenty of sunshine. So we're going to keep our rain chances pretty high once you go farther north you go into the Florida Panhandle and Georgia as we head towards uh, that day. And uh, temperatures below that... Again, we'll continue to stay mostly in the 90s, so looking at uh, another hot day as we approach the 5th with heat index temperatures in the triple digits, but records will continue also for the Mississippi Valley region from Alabama to the state of Mississippi as we head towards the 5th with uh, potentially records maybe reach up into the triple digits. So something to watch, but we'll see. <clears throat> All right, taking you to two weeks from yesterday. This is for Thursday, August 6th. Uh, looks like we'll keep the rain chances again pretty low to about 20%. So most of us actually will be looking dry once again as the drier, at least the dry pattern continues here in the Sunshine State. Uh, temperatures for highs below. Again, staying mostly hot with 90s and heat index temperatures in the triple digits, but the records do continue uh, also for the, for the sixth up towards Georgia to Mississippi and Alabama. So, yep, more and more heat is on the way. And heading into uh, two weeks from today, actually, this is for Friday, August 7th. It looks like we'll bring the rain chances back to about 40 to 50 percent here in central Florida. So we'll see about it. We'll see. We'll, begin, we'll get back to a mostly an average chance for some showers and late afternoon thunderstorms as we approach uh, that day. Again, not going to rain all day because the summer pattern continues as usual. And as we take a look at our temperatures, again, we'll be mostly staying really muggy and more hotter with more 90s and heat index temperatures in the triple ditches. But the records, again, will stay around for the Mississippi Valley region right along I-20 as we approach the 7th of August, too. Again, uh, it's land of voodoo, so you may never know. It could change as we get closer.
And then heading into uh, Saturday, August 8th, uh, after maybe a day of seeing some scattered uh, summertime storms, it looks like we'll bring the rain chances down to about uh, 20%, so most of us will be looking dry uh, again. And, of course, the rain chances up here farther north to go will be staying high at about 50% uh, up towards the I-20 corridor. But, again, here, uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot of rain chances here for central Florida then, but we'll see as we get closer because it could change. And as we take a look at our temperatures, again, looking at uh, mostly hotter than average with 90s and heat index temperatures in the triple digits. And as we end this uh, update tonight, we'll end with uh, Sunday, August 9th. It looks like we'll bump up the rain chance back to about 30 to 40 percent again as we head towards uh, the second uh, Sunday for August, if this model run is correct. But it looks like the best chance to see it, maybe a few storms will be just west of I-4 from, uh, we'll say, from Lake to parts of uh, Polk counties. But mostly the higher chances of, chances of rain that day looks to stay higher once you go farther up north into I-20. So, so looking at a higher coverage of rain that day, but our coverage looks to be much average looking uh, here in central Florida on the 9th. And as we take a look at the temperatures again, again, staying hotter than Hades with more 90s and heated X temperatures in the triple ditches. But... I think there could be some good news uh, for the Mississippi Valley region for next, or not next Sunday, the following Sunday, I'm sorry, for August 9th. If this run is correct, and since there could be a good chance of rain as well, that can bring temperatures down briefly cooler into the 80s and 90s, which that would be some good news. But remember, 80s and 90s are still warm and still muggy, but at least it, will not be, it, won't, be, it won't be as extremely hot uh, than at least before, but we'll see. Okay, everybody, I'm going to start wrapping up this uh, Facebook Live feed on this uh, Friday night. So that's it for the forecast video update. And I hope you guys have a good weekend. And I'll see you guys back here again for another live uh, edition of Facebook Live uh, Monday mo Or Well, if I get up on time Monday morning, I'll do a, a video update. But if not, then it'll be Monday evening between 8 or 8.30. And I'll continue, as always, here 24-7. I'll post more notes or updates on my blog and Facebook pages. But uh, for the meantime... Hope you guys, like I said before, hope you guys enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you all on Monday. All right, take care of yourselves. Remember to stay cool out there if you got outdoor plants as well. And uh, God bless you guys.